last panel discussion of the day. I hope that you had an informative and enjoyable conference day today. Welcome back again Thank you. Uh, to Turkey. I think it's not first time for you guys, right? No. Both second time. time for me. <laughs> Fourth and second. Second. First okay. time in Istanbul. Okay. Um, I think we can start with the uh, short summary of your story, of your background story. How did you start this um, separately? Um, oh, well, I've been a creative person all my life, pretty much. 12 years old, I had like an old VHS camera, running around with my friends, filming stuff. Um, but yeah, when I was like 17, I finished high school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I got a job cleaning carpets, which wasn't glamorous. Um, <laughs> And I did that till I was 21, and one day I just kind of woke up and was like, I want to do something different, I want to get out of this rut. Booked a one-way flight to Bangkok pretty spontaneously. Um, and yeah, I just took it from there. I had one night booked in a hostel, no money. And at the time, this was, this was nearly seven years ago, and Instagram was just taking off. It was kind of like the wild west of gray area, and like no one really knew what it was going to become or what it was. And... I had organically around 50,000 followers on my own page. No technique, it was just, I was in there really early. And then I started getting people contact me asking, hey, do you wanna post this ad for like $40? And I had no money, so this was like quite tempting, but these were like, like products that had no relation to me, like dog leashes, for example. And they weren't even gonna send me the product, it was like, here's a photo, a stock photo, um, can you just post it on Instagram? And, I didn't really want to do it, so I kind of made a series of like repost pages which could essentially post these ads. And that's what I did, and they all grew really fast just because I was early, like I was right at the start of Instagram, and that get, got me going for maybe four years, and it grew pretty fast. I had like 15 accounts between half a million to two million followers. So I'm like posting a lot of ads here, like very spammy ads, nothing I was passionate about. And it just became work and it was, wasn't really what I set out to do. I kind of set out to become free from work and then I've become this guy who sits in his hotel every day just working and it's like kind of defeated the object. So I sold it all and then I made Do You Travel and I thought if I'm going to make money or I'm going to create a project, it should be something I'm passionate about. And yeah, I did it from there and it just ever since took off. Cool. For, you? Uh, for me, I didn't get into social media so early. Um, it was about three, three and a half years ago. My sister started growing her following and hers was like a food lifestyle account. And she had people like offering her food and like free, she liked coconut water one time. And I was like, whoa, like that's amazing. And then I was like, well, food's not my thing. I love traveling. So I just went traveling for about three months across America. And that's when I first started like getting into it. And I was teaching myself how to use a camera, how to edit, and my whole goal for the entire trip was just to get reposted. I was like, I just want to get reposted by like one of those big accounts, like the accounts he had. Um, that didn't happen, but when I got home, I kept going at it, and it was like th three to six months later that I got my first job. And I had about 10K at the time and um, got offered to have a trip around the region where I was living in northern Queensland in Australia. And it was all expenses paid, helicopters, like hotels, all this stuff. And I was like, wow, like that's incredible, like the best experience. Um, when I was on that trip, there was other influencers there that were all bigger than me. And they were getting paid to be on the trip. And I was like, what? You guys get paid? Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I had no idea anyone was making money. Like, I was just so passionate and driven about, like, creating imagery and, like, getting, like, reposted and, you know, just having all the nice images. But then, um, yeah, from there, I just worked so hard. And I'd get little jobs here and there. And all I really wanted to do was just be able to travel. So I was like, as long as like, you know, I can make a little bit of money that I can travel or get free trips, that's all my aim was. And then, um, yeah, it was about another six months later, which was nearly a year and a half, nearly two years later I, ago, sorry, I met Jack and we were both working on a trip. So with the Fiji tourism and both had like our own accounts and first time we ever met. And um, yeah, we spent the whole week together just Rained working. every day. Yeah. They just had a cyclone and it was the worst weather. And so we literally spent a week together just getting to know each other. And we just had so much in common. And straight away he was like, all right, you should come to Bali. Like, let's hang out. And I was like, okay. So I went home for a week, flew straight to Bali. And then when we were in Bali, we just started planning. We made plans for the next eight months to just travel straight. And yeah, we didn't do any jobs. It was just pure travel, 
Um, and I guess a lot of people related to that or got inspired by that, and that's when we both really grew uh, to the following that we have today. Yeah, I think it was, I only had a, like about 100,000 followers, and that was, either, yeah, just over a year and a half ago. So it happened really quick. It was just, we were just traveling, enjoying it, taking nice pictures, and then it just, we had a few pictures that just went viral across like everyone on the internet, and then, yeah, so I got to here. You, you uh, so you started separately, but you met in a job. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, right now, when we look at your uh, accounts, it looks so integrated. I mean, you bought accounts. It started separately, but when we look, we see, I mean, personally, at least, it looks like a singular um, communication channel, like a singular uh, body. Uh, how does it happen? It looks so combined and integrated. Um, I think because we're just doing what we're doing, like, we're not trying to portray something we're not. So like, if I'm traveling on my own, I'm going to post photos of me traveling on my own. If I'm traveling with Lauren, I'm going to post photos of, like, we, we try and post photos of what we do. So like, if we set a photo up, which we do, it's always like a real moment that happens. So like, maybe we're eating breakfast at like, some hotel with a great view, for example. And we're like, oh, this could make a really cool photo. Let's enjoy breakfast today, and then set it up tomorrow, and then recreate the moment that we had. Mm -hmm. and that's just what we were doing anyway. We did that, like I said, we, we, we weren't getting paid. We did eight months traveling, just what, that's what we wanted to do. And then, because it resonated, and I think because we grew so fast, that's when the big brands started to contact us and made it like a new career. Um, I was asked, like a, a half an hour ago, I was interviewing with a TV channel from Turkey. They asked me, in previous event, we hosted Murad and Natalia, and right now we are hosting you. And they asked me why we are hosting couples for the last panel all the time, and we thought that, I mean, we have never thought about this, actually, we never planned it, but it looks like this way. And then I realized that if you want to be a good Instagrammer, if you have really good pictures of yourself, you always have someone with you, which is your plus one all the time, which means that you either have to travel with your wife or like uh, as a couple. So uh, it, when, when we look at this part, it looks so, I mean, it makes so sense, actually. You mentioned about the breakfast, by the way. I um, know a story of you in, in Cappadocia about uh, the, a breakfast. Can you tell us about it? You both been to Cappadocia before, yeah. Yeah. but then what you did in Cappadocia in a hotel changed the whole breakfast service in the yeah. region. How does that happen? Well. We had this idea, we were like, oh, we love the whole rooftops, seeing all the balloons take off in the morning. And we said to the hotel when we got there, we're like, hey, we want to have breakfast on your roof. Like, can we work that out? And then they were like, um, I, I guess so. And we're like, hey, let's lay down some rugs, some cushions. Let's have breakfast here. This will be such an amazing experience. And then we set it all up, got some pictures, and then it just went crazy now. Like, my sister was there only a couple months ago, and she was staying at the same hotel, and they said, just the whole place has changed now. Like, the actual hotel was telling her that all the hotels do it now. They've set their roofs up. They've changed everything. Breakfast now isn't down in the kitchen. It's up on the roof. That's just, everyone wants the photo. That's why they're all coming there. They want to come there. They want to sit on the roof. They want to get their photo. So now that's the thing there, which I think is really cool just to see that one image can really just change an entire tourism in a, in a town like that. So... It was funny because when we were up there and we decided to do this breakfast shot, there was no table or anything up there. So like we had the staff literally bringing tables from the breakfast area <laughs> up the stairs, upstairs to the roof. And everyone was just kind of like, everyone goes up to the roof to take photos, but like not of breakfast. So when they seen this table, everyone's kind of like, what are you guys doing? Like, why do you get breakfast on the roof? Why would you eat breakfast we? there? It's like the breakfast is downstairs, the buffet is downstairs. But um, yeah, it went off really well, and then every single hotel in Cappadocia pretty much does that now, and they have like a designated breakfast area on the roof. I don't think anyone eats breakfast downstairs anymore. <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting point. As an influencer, you also travel a lot. Uh, at the same time, you are a great feedback provider for the hotels or other companies who provide travel services to you. Um, how do you think the travel influencers might change or changing the whole travel services, the whole travel industry, because when you guys, I mean, there are lots of people in this hall as well, when you guys travel, you also provide feedbacks, you bring new ideas, you bring new uh, point of views to the hotels or to airline companies. How do you think this will be changing the whole travel industry? I think a lot of people now travel to get photos for Instagram or social media, 
-hmm. to just show their friends, look what we're doing. That's a fact. Like, everybody goes to places to take photos. Like, 10 years ago, that wasn't as much a thing. So I think if you go to a hotel and you think outside the box, or even if you don't think outside the box, if you just take a photo at a hotel that no one's seen before and, and millions of people see it, people then have this like, observation that oh, that's, that's, that's what we need to do. We need to go to this hotel and take this photo. They don't care what the room looks like. They don't care what the pool looks like. They want to go and take the photo there. So I think that in a way, if, if you've got like a photographic, uh, photogenic hotel, that's going to really work in your favor if an influencer comes over, takes a photo there, and that's going to change the whole marketing for your hotel. And that's what we look out for. Like, we're looking for hotels that have something unique, like a nice picture. We're like, oh, that's cool. That's got a really cool picture. Like, we want to stay there. Um, so I think that, like, hotels are really moving forward with that and starting to be more innovative and be more creative with how they make their hotels and, you know, making Instagrammable spots, really. I'm talking about hotels, I'm sure that you got asked every day uh, or, or you are offered to stay in a hotel for free of charge and you travel there and you shoot some pictures. I know that most of the influencers, especially on Instagram, are asked to stay in a hotel for free of charge, but not paid for that. How do you think influencers should consider this kind of offers? Because um, there is a line, some, some influencers might want to accept that, but at, at that moment, a question just pops up, which is like, when you start to accept that, you like, always have to accept that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to break at that one, one point and request to be paid. How do you manage that? Um, I think if it benefits the influencer equally to the hotel, that's great. I think if, you, if you're happy to not be paid and you want to go and take some photos, you're going to enjoy yourself and you know, go for it, I think there's nothing wrong with that. But I think when it becomes work, and like if you know you're going to spend a lot of time working and creating content and like making a viral shot of a hotel, then it's, got, it's, it's up to the influencer if they think it's worth it or not. Me personally, I don't do it. If I want to stay at a hotel, um, I don't even normally contact them to pay me. I've never asked anybody to pay me. Like, I've never reached out. I just pay for the hotel. Um, but like, when I was starting out, when I had like a, a real small following, I would take up all of those offers. I, I loved it. You know, it wasn't even work, but now that we're so busy, it's nice to, like, if you're not getting paid for something, it's nice to just enjoy your time there. Yeah, like, hotels will be like, come stay, just do two posts per night, and for us, that's, like, a lot of work. Like, we, we can't just snap anything. Like, we're looking for, like, really photogenic, you really putting a lot of work into it. And that's a lot of time that we, they're like, oh, you can come enjoy and do this, and it's like, we're not really going to enjoy our time. We're going to spend our entire time working. It's more beneficial for us to just pay to stay, and enjoy our time and focus on what we need to focus on. How do you plan your travels? Uh, I know that you, you should have traveled like uh, more than 50 countries, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess. So for the next destination, how do you decide where to go? Um, well, if it's not a job and we're just going for fun, then it's, it's just one of those, if you see a nice photo on Instagram, I guess, and, or if someone tells you, like if a friend says, hey, we went to this place and it was, awesome, we're you like, yes, go there. we're going to go there too. Yeah. Um, we yeah. try to go to new places as well, like, it's it is hard, hard yeah, like, every place seems to be just, like, everyone's been there, everyone's taking pictures, so it's, it's getting really hard, but we do try and go to places that aren't as seen as much on social media, just so we can get, you know, some nice pictures that not everyone's done before, and, and try and stand out a bit. It's nice to go and see the unknown as well, because, like, with a lot of these places that have been seen on Instagram a million times before you've even been there, you feel like you've already been there. Mm. And it's, it's not really new. And it's, sometimes it's like, it's not as good as it looks on Instagram when you get there. So it kind of like takes away from it a little bit. So it is nice to go and see a place that no one's been to before and you've just heard about it. Like you've just heard it's great and experience it that way. Yeah. That's what we try to do more lately. Um, there is another topic which is discussed really uh, hot nowadays, uh, especially for again, Instagrammers. Uh, which is keeping the personal life apart from the uh, Instagram, like keeping the personal life away. Um, do you think there should be a line between uh, the personal and the image uh, of the uh, Instagram? You are um, shooting videos, pictures, you are showing your experiences, but at the same time, it's, it's your life together. How do you manage this, this line? Where do you choose to put that line? 
Um, I think this is, again, it's, it's up to whatever you feel comfortable putting out there. Like, people daily vlog and show their whole day and their whole life. I mean, who knows how much of the life they don't show in the vlog. You don't know that. But me personally, I like to show the best parts. And I think that's the case with most people. Um, but at the same time, I won't ever portray something that's not real. So, like, I don't know if you want to elaborate more on that. Um, so, you, no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, what's next, and what are your plans for, for, for feature? Um, so, our next thing that we really want to focus on is video. As you just seen, that video that we put together, that's our next focus, is driving our traffic to YouTube. Because we're already really established on Instagram, but we want to be on YouTube. That's our next aim. Um, just really getting into video. I just think there's so much more in video. You can show so much more. Um, it's, it provokes more of an emotion. Like even when I watch that video, I still always get like fuzzy feelings. Like I'm like, oh, like it's just it's so real. Like you you just see those moments, and it's like you're back in them again. And so that's really like the next step for us. Maybe like going a bit more into vlog style. Um, because people want to see more behind the scenes. Like, they're like, they see the pictures and they're like, I want to see more, I want to see more. Like, people are constantly asking for it. Like, go to YouTube. So, it's like, yeah, a step we're taking now is like, okay, let's focus a bit more on YouTube and um, start building up that and just, you know, showing more of our life and more behind it and more of the experiences. Because we have so many, like, incredible experiences. And, like, we'll look back at the, like, the giraffe men and we're like, why didn't we vlog that? Like, that was like, one of the best experiences of our lives. Like, it was incredible. Like, I wish I vlogged it so I could, you know, rewatch it and relive it and show everybody. Like, there's so many people that will comment and be like, I don't have the opportunity to travel, but every day going online, going onto your Instagram account, I get to escape and come travel with you. And, like, that's such a nice thing to be able to give someone that opportunity to just take away for a moment and bring them with us. So, I think by doing vlogs and videos will really, you know, help with that. Um, do you work with a team or do you, like, you just doing whole thing by yourselves? We do it by ourselves, um, but if, you know, if we're with friends, it's always helpful to have someone take a photo. We're actually looking to hire, at the moment, a few people mm. um, to take on particular trips where we do need a hand, especially with video. Yeah. Uh, especially if we're like, trying to get videos of both of us together, that's not a tripod on, on a photo job. It's like you need someone to like, be with you. Um, we actually put a job applicant out, application out around a month ago, and we had like, over 4,000 people apply overnight. So still finishing out the, f the final details to that one and picking out the few people we want to take on. But yeah, that's like one of the new things we're going to take on for the next year. Yeah, I think it'll really like mix it up for us by having a bit of team behind us. They'll really be able to help us to take away some of the workload so we can focus more on being creative and like being in the moment and you know, what, like where we want to head and what direction we're heading in. So. Um, speaking about being creative, as a last question before uh, we get a couple of questions from the crowd, um, what uh, you would suggest to those who want to differentiate themselves? Because we see lots of people every day opening accounts or Instagram or even living their professional jobs. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest them to differentiate themselves? It's tough. It's, uh, it's, it's a very saturated... Uh, place at the moment, and I don't know. I think you've got to you, you be different. I think you can't just go and think of something different if it's not what you're passionate about, though. It's yeah. got to be like you've got to look up what am I passionate about? Um, how can I make that unique? And it's just it's tough. And I think that like, the original reason we grew so fast because we grew extremely fast in a very short period of time, and that was when we did the eight months of not working, just hitting these back to back destinations and getting like unique photos on every single place we went to, and no one had done it before. And, and it was a couple, like at that time, now there's just Instagram couples everywhere. Like I go on Instagram and it's just like, couple, yeah. couple, couple. At yeah. the time, it wasn't like such a thing. It was more like, say, the girl, and like the boyfriend was the photographer. And it was rare that like both of them would ever be in an image together. Whereas now it feels like, like everyone's so doing that. And we were like one of the first, you know, really doing that. And I think that's what really grew us because most of the time couples travel together or you, you dream of traveling and you're always going to want to go with your partner or someone close to you. So by having a picture of the two of us, people have really pitched themselves in that I think situation. it resonates way more because yeah. like, yeah, people do travel on their own. I traveled on my own for like five years. But I think most people want to travel with their partner if they have a partner. So I think that just that hit really well. And, um, and I think that's what everyone, everyone who is becoming an influencer 
I think in the, tr in the travel area anyway, they do try and do it with their partner. And, it, and I get it because like, it's more fun as well. It is, yeah, it is and it's fun. real. Yeah. Like, why would the partner just go around all day snapping away photos of the girlfriend? Like, if, they, if they're enjoying the experience too, why not be a part of it? I also think like, for people, they should not go in with the intention of, I just want to make money. Because that's not what it's about. You've got to go in with the passion. You've got to be really passionate about it and creative and then let the success come if it's going to come. But if you push too hard and you try and all you've got in the back of your head is, I want to make money, that's not the right way to go around it. And you're not going to be as creative. You're not, going to, you're not going to be successful because it comes across like that resonates with your audience that that's all you're really trying to do. Like you want to portray to your audience like a real you and like what you're really after. Like you're, you're creative and you're trying to express that, not... I'm trying to do all these ads to make all this money and grow a following just to have some numbers. I think we run out of our time. So, uh, but before we can get a couple of questions from the audience, because I know that most of you are waiting for uh, this panel, uh, probably. Do we have any questions? OK. Hi, guys. Uh, I want to ask um, a normal question. Uh, where is the best place you went before? or list? Uh, best destination? Three. Yeah, best destination. Recently, we went to the Cook Islands. I took Jack there for his birthday, and it was probably one of our favorite destinations. It's My just, favorite. yeah, it's just so naturally beautiful, and I felt like it's quite untouched. Not many people have really been there. I haven't seen it so much online, and it was just, it was just really nice. Like beautiful water, beautiful yeah. culture, beautiful food, and it's quite untouched. And it's not. There's no big hotels there. There's none of the big chains, and yeah, it was special. Thank you. Yeah, we have another one. Uh, you said uh, your next step would, would be uh, YouTube. What do you think uh, would be the most challenging thing uh, about YouTube after Instagram? Um, I think time. I think YouTube takes a lot of time. Um, we're already so busy, but, which is why we're trying to hire people as well to help with that. Um, I think it's worth it. I think it's great to show like more personality. And going back to one of the questions he asked earlier about the personal life to what you show online, like there's only so much you can show on Instagram, whereas YouTube like opens a little bit more out, and that's what we kind of want to do next. Uh, thank you so much for listening to us and being with us today. Thank you for thank you. Thank you.